Good morning and welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. Uh, this morning I'm putting together kits for Vice Squad this week and since summer's over, at least on the calendar, I thought it'd be a good time to introduce the Autumn Splendor Good Fall streamer pattern. It's got to be my favorite right up there with the Thin Mint. Now if you know the authentic Autumn Splendor you know that the tail is just brown but I add the yellow underneath. It's tending towards the JJ Special if you remember that pattern. I've got a streamer hook 4x long. This is a Dairiki 700 and a size 6. I'm going to start with some lead. The lead is .030 and I want 12 turns of it. And by the time I fold this flap around, I'll have 13. Now this will help me index this fly and, and tell me where to start my leg so that my patterns are consistent from the first to the last. I'm starting my thread behind the eye and I want to bring it back at least an eye length behind. Now if I build up a dam here it's going to push this lead towards the back so instead I'm going to hold it in place with my thumbnail I just bring my th thread to the back build a tiny little dam back there then I'll come forward and build just a bit of a ramp now this is another reason you want to use 140 denier thread You'd be making a ton of wraps if you use 8 aught or 70 denier. That ramp at the front's going to help when we wrap our chenille so that it won't be dropping off that coil of lead. Now when I get to the back, I don't need too much of a ramp because I'm going to fill it in with marabou. And the under color is yellow. I'm going to peel some off the side of the feather. Now typical feather you can peel off the side and maybe get one or two flies off the sides and then use the tips for your last one so it's a good economical way to do this. I want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank. pretty close. Bring the thread back to the barb of the hook. Now make sure you don't use too much of that yellow because you got to put another color on top. Now this brown feather I've already used the marabou off the sides of the stem so I can stroke this one out and just use the tips. There we go, brown on top, yellow on the bottom. And for flash, we're going to use some copper crystal flash. And I don't really want to overdo it, so I'm just going to use a couple of strands. Two for the near side, two for the far side. Hold them in place as you come back. I'm going to trim it just a little bit longer than the marabou. And take a second and do a couple of posting type turns around the base of the marabou. That will help a little bit in keeping this from fouling. Now, we're going to introduce a little different technique from what I'm usually demonstrating. We're going to tie in a little bit of wire. This is a common way to reinforce a woolly booger. Get our brown chenille. And 
and stroke that to the back and keep it out of the way while we move forward and install our legs. If the legs are difficult for you, feel free to skip them. This is still a good woolly booger even without them. Now, I've got some round rubber legs that I've pre-cut to two inches. I've determined that that's a pleasing length for the legs. So I'm going to peel one off right behind where the lead started. I'm going to tie it in on my side and jockey it until it's pretty much even. Now I'm going to make a couple of wraps towards the back to make sure that this leg on my side of the hook is right down on the center line. Now I'm going to fold the far leg over and get my thread right behind that little hernia of rubber there. So now I've got a leg on each side and they're swept back about the same. Move forward a little bit and install the next set of legs the same way. And then move forward yet again for the last set. I'm kind of measuring each leg against the previous leg and that keeps keeps them relatively even. I got pretty good tension on this thread here. Okay, now I'm at the front. I'm ready for my hackle. I've got a whiting booger pack. And the brown hackle is what's called for, but this is grizzly dyed brown. Anytime you can introduce the grizzly stuff, it's a good thing. So I'm going to peel some of that away. and tie this in right at the front. Now I don't want my wraps too tight where that hinges or it can cut that stem and make it break. A little bit of moisture on the marabou to keep it out of the way. And now I'm going to work my way forward with the chenille. And then when I get to the rear set of legs, I'm stretching pretty good on the chenille, using it like a tying thread to lock those in. And I'll end up getting three turns of chenille in between the legs. I hope I didn't pull that too far out of focus. Now I'm going to double that chenille back and I'll be glad I left myself some space for the head here. Now the hackle, I want it cupping towards the back and I want to get a good full turn before I do anything else. And I'm going to get a pair of hackle pliers on, I just think it's a little easier. And jump it up onto the chenille and start spiraling your way back. I 
and when you get to the back we're going to catch it with the wire and spiral, spiral the wire forward and this will counter wrap the hackle so that it won't break and if it does it won't unravel and you can see we're getting just a little bit of copper flash through the body now I've made that last wrap in front of the thread that's important now I'm going to fold it to the back so that wire is tied down but I'm going to build the head and tie the whip finish before I break that wire I don't want a little sharp part of the brake available to cut my thread there you go break the wire and we have one last little tag here to trim. So there you have it, an Autumn Splendor. Good fly to have in the fall. The brown trout love it.